Happy video day guys. So today I'm actually really excited for this video because not only is a ranking video, which I love ranking videos because I don't know, I just feel like there's so much more entertaining because you actually have to put things in like an order, which they make things like a lot more difficult for me. <laughs> but also in today's video, we're going to be only focusing on subscription boxes. So I am only going to be telling you my top five and bottom five from the subscription subscription boxes that I have received in 2020. So basically everything mixed together, we're going to have 10 products here. We're going to have the top five and the bottom five. Even more exciting than the actual video is that I'm going to be collabing on this video with a good friend here on YouTube, Leah. So now if you guys don't know Leah's channel, she literally is the queen of subscription boxes. She has so many subscription boxes and she also has one that I'm like obsessed with and it's the Disney subscription subscription box and I literally love to watch those videos. She also has a whole series on her channel about TJ Maxx and she goes and she finds all these amazing deals. Very, very entertaining channel. Super, super, super sweet girl. So if you guys want to go check out her channel, definitely check it out. And also after this video, obviously go check out her video because she has <laughs> so many subscription boxes that I'm sure you guys are going to see a variation of pretty amazing stuff. When I was trying to figure out like what idea I wanted to do for my subscription boxes, because I wanted to like give you guys something at the end of the year about them, I was thinking of this idea and I was like, you know what, I really want to collab on this. And Leah was like the perfect person just because I felt like if you guys didn't get enough from mine, you can definitely jump over to her and see all the rest of them. And if you guys are from Leah's channel, hello, thank you guys so much for jumping over to watch my video. I'm Christina Brooke. What I do here is I talk about makeup. I also love to throw in some fashion. If you guys like those things, I would love it if you'd want to join by hitting subscribe and let's go ahead and let's break down all of this information. I've got a lot to talk about and let's get into it. Okay, so this was not easy. <laughs> This was not easy. Primarily, I have BoxyCharm as my main subscription box. Then I added on Ipsy because I became part of their Ipsy Open Studios. And then I also became part of the Glossy Box PR. And I started getting more and more subscription boxes. I got advent calendars from Glossy Box. I've gotten so many. I also got another PR box of the AIA bundles. So there's a few different subscription boxes here. I went through my entire list to see like all the products that I had received over time. And I will tell you, primarily, Primarily, there's a lot of BoxyCharm in here, but there's some other stuff too. So we're going to go ahead and start this off with the worst products in subscription boxes for 2020 for myself. So these are going to be my top five worst products. <laughs> Number one was a huge doozy, by the way. The first thing is going to be this little liner right here. So this is a lip liner from the brand called Cab, and it actually came inside of a glossy box and Oh, I don't like, I don't like. This is so dry. And besides it being dry, it's very neon-y. When I saw it, I actually thought that's gonna be really pretty. I like the color, like at least the cap. But when you actually swatch it, it look like fuchsia. So I tried it on and it was just one of those really dry liners that when you put it on, it feels like you're taking like a million years to put on. I will use it, but it's definitely not good. So definitely that was not a good product. So the next one, <laughs> is one that I got in the AIA bundle. So the first time I used this, I was not like in love with it, but I wasn't like anti it either. But it's from a brand called Mana Kadar. And this was a collab with the AIA bundle and it's a high perfecting powder. Now, the problem that I have with this is it has like one of those real white casts. And I actually thought that the reason that it was giving me a little bit of a white cast was because it was more of an HD powder. And maybe it was just me. Maybe I didn't really know that the HD powders give a little bit more of a white cast. But yeah, that's not true. <laughs> because I did try out the Makeup Forever ones, the HD ones that also look white like this. But when you put them on, you don't really turn white. I feel like this one just has a very white chalkiness to it but I really feel like if you're gonna buy like a white powder it's not really like you want to turn into a ghost you know I mean I put on like a skin toned foundation to keep my skin tone and then I bronze myself up to get even bronzer and then if I put something like this why do I want to turn back into a ghost you know so this just didn't work for me I don't know if anybody else likes this but for me and my skin tone this was like a no 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 
Okay, so number three, do I even have it here? Yes, so number three is this right here from Tarte. So this is the Tarte Micellar Magic. When I first got this, I thought it was good. You know, like I wasn't really, I just thought like, you know, a micellar water is meant to take off makeup. I really have not been somebody who was into micellar water and a lot of people had told me like a million times, like Christina, you should be using micellar water. It's so good for your skin. It also helps to remove makeup. It's not harsh. And when I got this one from Tarte, I was kind of like, yay, I get to try micellar water. And at first, yeah, I thought it started working good. But what starts to happen, this always happens with anything you use at skincare. You need to use it for a while. After using this for a while, my skin started drying out. Like I can notice the difference in my skin and I was like, why? And then of course, dry skin can cause acne breakouts. It depends on your skin, but like my skin, if it gets very dry, I start to break out. So I started to kind of do a process of elimination. What new have I added to my skincare routine? It was the Tarte Micellar Water. And yeah, it's just not good for my skin. I think my skin is just sensitive. I do have a sensitive skin. So putting this on my skin was like a big doozy. It's kind of like one of those products that I have it here on my makeup desk and I will go to it and I will try to use it, but I only can use it like to fix little mistakes here and there. But it's not like some of the other products that I showed you that I can actually use them if I wanted to. This one, if I do put it on my face, I do know that I'll kind of break out. So I'm using it, but I can't use it that much. But um, I started using the Bioderma one. That one is like the best micellar water ever. So I'm so happy it didn't like turn me off to trying a different brand, but it got close to that point. I was like, yeah, maybe this is just not good for me, but no, don't like that. And guys, I don't remember if I got this in BoxyCharm or Ipsy. I don't know why I feel like it was Ipsy. So number two was something that I believe came in BoxyCharm. I'm pretty sure it was a BoxyCharm product. I saw that it was a $40 eyeliner and when I saw that price, I was like, well, what is this? Is this Charlotte Tilbury? But it was a brand called Elizabeth Moth. And the reason that it was $40 is because it had two pencils inside. So I was like ecstatic. I was like, well, that's great. I like two pencils, but oh, those eyeliners were not good. I don't like them. They weren't smooth. I like my eyeliners to glide, but if they do glide, I don't want them to transfer. These were very, very hard to move. Like it was almost like I felt like if I put this on my waterline, this is gonna hurt. Or if I try to like do this on the top line, like this is gonna hurt. And I tried using it. I was not a huge fan of it. Both of them I really didn't like. I have them somewhere like ready to like declutter. And probably when I do my end of the year declutter with, which, oh my gosh, guys, I have to do. My makeup literally is kind of getting like backed up. <laughs> I need to kind of like declutter here, but I don't know where they are, but they're not that great. <laughs> they weren't good products. I literally, I don't. Now, number one, this was the worst product for me that I received in a subscription box. And guys, it was from BoxyCharm. And I received some products that have not been that good this year. Like, you know, some of the ones that I told you about, they all had their little issues, too dry, didn't work good, made me look like a ghost, but nothing was as bad as this. The Zueva Blanc Fusion Palette. What is this? Now, if you guys wonder why this palette is so disgusting, it is because I have a four-year-old daughter that loves makeup. This is her palette. I have gifted her this in my makeup room. Like literally when she walks in and she wants to destroy all the rest of my palettes, I decided that this could be her makeup palette. I leave it out on my counter so that when she comes to kind of like destroy a palette, she destroys this one because this is that bad. I don't care. I don't like this at all. Like these colors are just so boring for me. They do nothing for my skin. I don't know if it's the color of my skin. Maybe if you guys had a very fair skin, maybe you like this, but even like the color combinations, brown with yellow and taupes, this was just bad. I tried doing an eye look that I was like, let's do a pop of yellow with a brown outer edge. And I was like, but who would do this? Like, at least if the yellow was like a mustard, it was a blending shade and it had a really deep, rich brown, kind of like Natasha Denona's gold palette. You're talking about a completely different palette here, but this thing was just so bad. 
oh my goodness, I hate the color story. I didn't really like the formula and I was so excited guys. When I opened this box, I was like, I finally get to try Sueva because everybody talks about Sueva and I got this palette which I guess was kind of like the dud palette. Like some of you guys have told me that one of the palettes that is always on sale or the palette that nobody really likes is this palette. So unfortunately that's the way I was able to try Zueva and I was so disappointed. I had this idea that Zueva was going to be this amazing pigmented, amazing dream. And then they gave me this and I went, oh. so yeah, that is the worst thing I got this year. So that is my bottom five items I received this year in subscription boxes. So leave me your comments below of your bottom five because some of you guys have different subscription boxes. So I would love to read all your funny comments of like the worst stuff you got because I'm sure, I'm sure they're funny. Okay, but let's get into the best. Let's, let's cheer up the mood. Let's go from the Grinch to Santa Claus. Let's talk about some awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Because you know what? I did get some bad stuff this year, but I have to say I got some awesome stuff this year too. Like literally even towards the end of the year, some of the stuff that I got made me even rethink canceling subscription boxes just like that. You know, when I was thinking of like the best stuff that I received this year, I had to think of like stuff that I actually use a lot. I got in a product from Benefit that I really, really love, but it's not like I have, I haven't really used it because I've been using something else. So I was like, ah, I mean, it was a great product, but I don't use it like yet, you know? So I picked things that I feel like I keep getting use out of. And this one is going to be one of the ones that I get so much use out of. So this is from Glossy Box. Now you guys are probably thinking like, what the heck is that, Christina? I just think this is the cutest thing ever and I keep it in my shower. So it's a shower cap, guys. This is a shower cap, but it looks like a turban. Tell me that's not cute. So gone are the days that I look like a grandma in the shower when I don't want to get my hair wet and I put this on. Okay, if you guys have the shower heads like me, I have like almost a rain shower head. Like it's like literally almost on top of my head. So if I go back a little bit too much, the back of my hair gets wet and it's like, it gets me so mad, especially if I just did my hair like the day before. But now I have this shower cap in my shower and I just think it looks so cute. I don't know, I put it on and I just feel like, ah, la, la, you know, like I'm not gonna wet my hair, but I still like look super cute and it's not like anybody sees me, but. I love this. I think this is so adorable. I also, <laughs> this is so funny, but I also feel like, let's say I go to the beach or if I go to the pool or something, let's say I'm taking my daughter like to, to the pool and I literally just did my hair. <laughs> I could put this on and not wet my hair. I mean, I'm just saying. Now, the next one, I'm gonna show you guys a picture of it because I have it in my bathroom and I'm sure you guys have seen these so many times, but I love these. So this is from Sol de Janeiro and these are the Bum Bum Creams. So this year in BoxyCharm, they gave us both of them in one box. I can't remember if it was Boxy Lux or BoxyCharm, but oh my goodness, I absolutely, absolutely was obsessed, obsessed. I already had the bum bum cream in another box and then this year I got both of them one of them smells like a coconut amazingness and the other one smells like that bum bum cream that I don't know if we even know what it smells like but it just like smells so good that it doesn't matter if we don't know what it smells like because it smells that good so both of those creams came in one of my boxes and literally I love them I love them I love them I leave them in my bathroom and they're just they just smell so good guys like these were amazing all right guys so this is where it gets a little bit difficult because let me tell you that the next few things were so good like literally things that i would have gone to a store and picked up it's very hard for me to rate these for you guys like honestly i'm like how do i put this like i don't even know i really don't so really the last three guys i literally feel like i could just i could put them in any order and they would still be amazing but the reason i'm going to put this one in number three is because i got the wrong shade in my box Loxy Charm, Loxy Charm, you sent me the wrong shade and I'm so pissed. But no, this is so good. So this right here is the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. This is such a good concealer. It is too yellow and a little too dark for me, but I make it work. I make it work, I mix in another concealer, but oh, I know that this is amazing. Anytime I put this on with any concealer, anything I try to mix it with to lighten it up a little bit, even if it's just a little bit of the foundation that I have on, 
I love the way this looks. It literally transforms my under eyes. I don't get creasing. I don't have to set this. It looks amazing, guys. Like, honestly, obsessed. This is so good. I've heard you guys tell me before when I've put this in videos that I think it's so good that this is such an amazing product and oh my gosh, like you guys are so right. This is so good. I want to buy my correct shade of this just to have it, but I have convinced myself that what I need to do is finish this one by mixing it with foundation or with another concealer and then when it's gone, I will buy my right shade because that is the way I should do it because otherwise I'm just probably not going to use this anymore and I shouldn't do that because I can get away with using it but obsessed with this guys so so good last two this was hard this was very very hard now I'm a sucker for a very good product and it doesn't matter if it's one item on its own it doesn't matter what it is if it's just like something that I'm like obsessed with like I will use it non-stop and the next two I really don't know I really really love them both but okay so I'm just gonna do this I'm gonna say number two is gonna go to Hourglass that's hard because this was such a good product this was the scattered light glitter eyeshadow in Rapture I also got this in a boxy charm and guys, this was the best. Oh my gosh, the color of this. Can they please, I would like a brand to just make a whole eyeshadow palette around this type of plumish, mauvish purple. Like this was just like everything. When I put this on the lids, it's like, it's just amazing guys like this this is everything most beautiful topper I've used this all over the lids deepening out the outer edge and literally I feel like it just like transforms a look the most beautiful thing ever and I know a lot of you guys also told me that these scattered lights are so great but this color rapture guys like honestly for being something that comes in a boxy charm, you would think it's like the products that maybe not as many people bought maybe it's like the overproduction items that color amazing we are down to the wire and i'm going to share with you guys my number one product that i received this year in subscription boxes and it's also a boxy charm item oh gosh guys let me just tell you i tell me right now if you guys know what it is you guys probably know what it is am i so obvious that you guys know what it is i think i am am i i am that obvious am i the Natasha Denona Boxy Charm Exclusive. I think this is a Boxy Charm Exclusive. That's what I heard. But, oh my goodness, guys, this is amazing. So this was in the color, what was this called? I don't even remember. What did I write down? This is the Peak Palette. And holy cannolis, this is great. So when I first saw an image of it, because it was like everywhere, everybody was talking about the fact that Natasha Denona was gonna have one of these larger palettes inside BoxyCharm, it was kind of a big deal. I mean, this isn't even a mini, guys. This is like her smaller five pan palettes that is on the big side, because she has minis that are like this big. This is a larger size palette. When we found out this was gonna be in BoxyCharm, it was kind of like a big deal, but, I wasn't sure if I loved the color story when I just saw an image of it. There was no swatches available. It was just like an image. In person, oh my god, I love this. Now, the only color I don't use that much is this one right here, but these, oh. This gold right here is the most delicious gold in the universe. Like, I don't even know, like, honestly, like, how does she do that? How does she do that? I don't know if you guys can even appreciate it on camera, but when I have put this on all over the lid, I have been like, wow, that is just, oh, it's so, so pretty. The cream is great. All of these colors, they're just, they're just great. I mean, like, come on. I'm in love with some of the colors in this palette. Like I said, this color, this color, this color, these three are like my go-to right here. This one, every once in a blue moon I'll use, but it's a little bit too bright for me. And the cream is just when I feel like lightening something up. It's not like I use it that often, but these three colors, they are gorgeous to me. And they're Natasha Denona's formula like that is this is Natasha and it came in a subscription box that is just completely amazing she is my favorite brand I feel like we got like list like a leftover palette like a bunch of colors that maybe just didn't work out and they just threw it in a palette 
this is really, really pretty. Super fall vibes. I love a good fall look. And yeah, I just love it, guys. I love it. This was a fantastic palette. I love the formula. And I was very shocked to see it inside of BoxyCharm. Now, another thing that I loved about this is Natasha Denona's price point is out of the price point for a lot of people. I know a lot of people, they just don't want to spend that kind of money on an eyeshadow palette, which I mean, hello, is totally understandable. But the fact that BoxyCharm was able to give people access to Natasha Denona, ah, oh, I thought that that was like, literally that probably just made so much sense. That just made the entire year for me. I mean, I'm just waiting for BoxyCharm to team up with Charlotte Tilbury. I mean, I will be like, you guys have done it. Like if they get Charlotte Tilbury on board, I will be, I mean, I'll be shocked. But yeah, guys, so that is my top five, bottom five of all of the items that I received in subscription boxes this year. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys wanna see a bunch of different stuff because I am sure Leah's gonna be showing you things from Disney, from FabFitFun. So you're gonna be able to see an array of different stuff, not just only makeup, you're gonna be seeing a lot of stuff. Jump over to Leah's channel right now and check her out. Give her a big hi, let her know that you came from my channel. Thanks so much for watching and yeah, until the next video, I'll see you guys later.